television and radio with Sonny Duke Okosun. Today on the program, we'll review all the major political issues of the week and then we we'll center on one. Of course, you know, uh, just last week, the People's Democratic Party, as well as the ruling All Progressive Party, confirmed their presidential candidate. The same goes for the Social Democratic Party. But uh, in the later part of the week, what became the major issue wasn't the emergence of the presidential candidates of political parties, numbering 31 altogether. It was the endorsement of the PDP candidate by former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Ulusegun Obasanjo. And that's against the background that on several locations, uh, several platforms, several for us, even in his book that he wrote, uh, he made people to understand that this is one man he will never forgive for reasons best known to him. But uh, he's changed his mind and uh, there seems to be a working relationship. The opposition party has not taken lightly to this new development as they've asked Nigerians not to take this purported endorsement seriously against the background that the man had repeatedly told Nigerians that he didn't want to have anything to do with the former vice president turned PDP presidential candidate. So the question is, what has changed within these few days, few weeks? And then the bigger question is, is former president Ulusegun Obasanjo a factor in who becomes Nigeria's president? There are those that say there is a history where this has happened. There are those that say it's a pure coincidence. All of these and more will form part of our discussions today on the program. Welcome on board. But let's quickly meet our panelists in the studio. I'd like to thank very especially our former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice at the state, Barrister Henry Idagba. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Good morning, viewers. I also have with us in the studio a former governorship mm -hmm. candidate in Edo State, an author and a publisher, public affairs commentator, Bishop Akharabe. Bishop, many thanks for joining Good us. Good morning, Tanshina. Good morning, viewers. We're hoping uh, Barrister A.B. Thomas will be able to join this discussion as we make progress. And as usual, all our social media platforms are up and running. You can follow the program live right now, right away on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash ITV Radio NG. You can watch us via our website from any part of the world where we're also streaming the program live. Well, in the later part of the program, our studio line will be open 052-290-573 so you can call and be part of the discussion. Like you know, the rules remain the same. When you call in, do not cast a passion on anyone, whether in the studio or outside the studio. Let's focus on the issues and leave the personalities out. That has been our standing rule. Then endeavor to turn down the audio level of your radio set or television set, depending on the platform you're following us on the program on, to avoid echo, which will distort the sound and makes it difficult uh, for us to hear you and for you to hear us. Once again, welcome on board the program Politics Today on independent television and radio. Let's begin with uh, the uh, plethora, so to speak, of candidates for the 2019 presidential election. Looks like the highest we've ever had. What is the import of this? Are we seeing, like some have said, uh, contenders and pretenders? So who are the contenders? Who are the pretenders? But in, our, in my opinion, everyone who's made it to become a presidential candidate is a serious contender. Only time will tell how much the people appreciate such an individual. So let me start with uh, Bishop Akhalame. 31 presidential candidates. What's the import of this in terms of the development and progress of Nigerian democracy? Thank you very much, Mr. Duke. You see, I am not surprised with regard to the numbers of uh, candidates we are having now contesting uh, for the presidential election. The reason why you see this large number of people contesting for this uh, tall order in the country uh, is because of the challenges, the economic challenges facing us as a nation. Because the leaders we have had over the years and the one we have now, they seem to lack the knowledge of economists. 
that to the point that our economy has got to that level of uh, a comatose that nothing is working anymore. Uh, we have said it in different uh, fora that if you're an intellectual, you shouldn't leave governors for some class of people. It is time for us to come out. Tell the people what you have to offer to ensure that we have a better country. You're saying leadership failure is what's responsible for this yes. numerous yes. presidential yes. Yes. candidates yes. that we because have? In, over the years, yes. many people are those who have the intellectual capacity, those who are very resourceful, those who have what it takes to drive the economy of this country have always been on the fence. They, 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 they blame the, 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 the governors for some class of people. They have discovered that this country does not belong to one person. That if we leave it for some class of people, that means a time will come, we will not have a nation anymore. So why should we run away from your country when you have the capacity to transform this country? So what is important is that, let me showcase myself. Let me come out. Let me tell Nigeria my potentials. Let me tell them what I can do to turn around the situation facing us as a nation. That is the reason why we have a lot of people coming out today. I have taken the general overview of these contestants coming out. I can tell you, anyone that says they are pretenders is just joking. Because when I look at the, the profile of these people coming out to contest this election, these are people who have discovered that things are not working in this country. And I have equally looked at them that they have what it takes to join, to what, to change, to turn this around. The only message I have for Nigeria is that a time has come to, to look beyond political parties. A time has come to look beyond political affiliation. A time has come for us to just forget to be pretenders. A time has come for us to be very serious. Because if this country does not work, all of us, all of us, all of us will take the blame. It's not some class of people. All of us, as long as you are from Nigeria, you take the blame. So a time has come for us to look for a leader. A, an economist who understands economics. A leader who can drag the economy of this country. Not a leader who is called because you belong to a particular party A. You belong to a particular party B. That because of that, you have to get a ticket to what to rule this country. No. A time has come for us to look for leaders who can change the economy of this country, who can change this. Okay. Who let can me, add money to the lives of me, every person. There, but there is really no correlation between being an economist and being <laughs> a successful leader who can make an impact. There is no correlation in terms of empirical research. But I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Mr. Bakalami. Okay. I'll come back to okay. you. Uh, Mr. Henry yes. uh, would you say it's a plus for the present administration that we have this numerous presidential candidate? Does that reflect opening up of the political space? Well, I don't think the political space was it too closed. I, I just feel many of those who are contesting under their various platforms, like to borrow your term, many of them are pretenders. The, the, there are two contenders in this election, and that is the incumbent president and the PDP candidate. If I ask my brother Bishop Bakala Menal to tell us the names of some of the other 30, he will not know them. And I don't, apart from Duke, Donald Duke, former governor of Cross River State, maybe uh, so worry of uh, Sahara reporters. I don't know the, okay, Kisli Mogalu, because he's married to my classmate. I'm, I've been able to name three. But I'm sure there are so many Nigerians who can't even name three. Well, we'll help Nigerians today on the <laughs> show. <laughs> to, to, give them yes, we'll give them the okay, complete fine, name, 31 fine, of them, yeah, fine. before we end you the see, show. The, 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 what he has said may be the ideal thing. You know, the ideal thing. But I am a realist. A pragmatic realist. What is on ground is that many of these presidential aspirants will not even win their polling units because they do not have the structure so to do. Uh, there's a good friend who contested for the presidency of this country once from this state. I'm sure across the country didn't make 4,000 votes. The next election now contested for the governorship of Edo State. Across the state, it didn't make 2,000 votes. Not because he's not a good person. Not because he doesn't have leadership qualities. He does not have the platform. So for me, the 31 or so of them are just jokers. People want to be referred to as former presidential candidates. They contested against Buhari. They contested against Atiku. Because in reality, they do not have 
the platform to be able to drive an electionary campaign and win, even to come a distant third, because the first and second will be between uh, Buhari and Atiku. The person that will come third, if uh, Buhari has like uh, 15, 15 million votes, uh, Atiku has like 13 million votes, the person that will come third will be like 5,000. That's the point I'm making. It's not as if these people are not good people or that they cannot be president of Nigeria. Unfortunately, our politics, our law says you must belong to a political party to contest for office. And as we speak today, there are only two parties that have structures in the 774 local government areas in Nigeria. And that's the APC and the PDP. The new parties, ADC, SDP, they are struggling, but they don't have the structure yet. And that is the reality on ground. So to that extent, in as much as I have my personal respect for each of the 31 of them, they are pretenders. They are far millions of miles away from the presidency of Nigeria. The president after 2019 election will be either Bibuari or Atiku, not uh, Sowori, not uh, Mogalu, not uh, all the other uh, 29 others. Okay. That's my humble submission. Yeah, Bishop Akalame, uh, 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 you've been frowning. I don't know what that is about. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe by Sir Harry Dagmo, he to below the belt because I know you was contested as a governorship candidate under a political party. Yes. Uh, these things that yes. he talked about seems yes. to describe yes. you in, in, in a sense. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. I, I want to totally disagree uh, with my erudite in the government. I say, Percy, I respect so much. He's my friend. But on this platform, we have to say what to call a spade a spade. He the nail the head. I totally discuss, I disagree with me. You cannot say somebody who is contesting as a president of this country cannot win his polling unit. It's, it's not correct. You know what I'm saying? That once you are contesting an election, once you are contesting an election, whether as a councillor, whether as what as a chairman or whether as what as a governorship candidate, you must have followers. There are people who will believe in you. Take for instance, I contested under the platform of people for democratic change in this state as a governorship candidate. I can tell you that in my local government, in my three units, that the, the, the bigger the, the, the bigger party will talk about the PDP and the APC, we are there. Okay? I'll tell you that I was totally in control, in charge of my unit. You can't come there. In other words, you won them. Yes! <laughs> Let me tell you. I took charge of that election. So in that case, you cannot come there. You say you want to win an election there. Because the people believe in me. So once you see a candidate, a candidate cannot just be alone. He must have supporters. I quite agree with him that some of the parties do not have structures. Fine. But my concern is this. We should not allow the structures we are talking about to deceive us in as much as we want to put Nigeria right. Okay. In as much as we want to make Nigeria a better country. We shouldn't be talking about political parties right now. But that, that, is, that is what has led us to where we are today. That we have two political parties in Nigeria. The APC and the PDP. So we should have candidates that emerge from these two political parties. So, so be it. If we continue like this, we cannot get it right. A time has come for us to look beyond. I said it. I want to. I want to recapitulate. A time has come in Nigerian democracy that we should look beyond political party, because what are the political party you are looking at? You come major. Most times, they may not fit the right point. The, the right what? Uh, 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 candidate. Because now what I discovered over the years now, two things give me concern that we have been able to sacrifice competence. In the altar of loyalty, as long as the person is loyal to one or two persons in a political party, it doesn't matter whether they can deliver, it doesn't matter whether they have the intellectual capacity to deliver. What they do is to see how we can reward him to contest. You see, it becomes it become, it's, it's a kind of dishonesty on the part of the candidate as well. When you know that the, what they are giving to you, they trust the responsibility that they are giving to you. You can't deliver on such principle because it does not play with your potential. Yeah. Instead of you to say, leaders, I know you respect me so much because of my loyalty to you and the loyalty to the party. But I don't have the capacity to deliver. Please, I don't have the capacity to deliver on this. Give me a, a duty or a responsibility that tally with my potential. Now, let me just ask this follow-up question. Okay. Um, there's been talks that the emergence of this third one uh, presidential candidate, yeah. which is a fallout from the number of 
political parties registered so far. Okay. Uh, Alec Chairman once told us that he still has about 140 applications <laughs> okay. of registered, I mean, uh, 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 political parties that wants to be registered. Okay. Someone said, well, this is perhaps a strategy or a ploy by the ruling party to weaken the okay. coalition, the okay. movement of the opposition. Uh, okay. Do you subscribe to that? Let me tell you something. In 2019, I want to tell you something very honest. You can say, I'm a 21st century politician. In 2019, it's not going to be a walk to the park, a stroll to the park. Those who are insinuating that, they are right, 55%. Because the way it is right now, no party, I repeat, the so-called major party that my elderly government has referred to, none of them can win election in 2019, presidential election in this state, without alliance. Okay? Without, because Nigerians are tired. Nigerians are frustrated, even to the point that majority of us are now living the country to a small, small country like Ghana here. Okay, let me let me let me say this. Let me say one thing. Okay, say, say just one thing. Just one thing. <laughs> one thing, <bitter. laughs> one thing yes. The day before yesterday, mm -hmm. I saw a Nigeria in Ghana that committed suicide because her shop and the, the shop of her husband was 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 locked by Ghana authority. The question I'm not asking is this. What has Ghana done right that is making our people to migrate from Nigeria to small Ghana here that you put Kumasi and Akka together? It's not as big as Lagos State. What is it that our leaders cannot do to ensure that these people remain in Nigeria? You answered that question in the course of the program. <laughs> but let me get uh, Vice Henry Dagbo in here. Yes, talking about uh, a ploy by the ruling party to uh, weaken the coalition of forces ahead of 2019. Well... I, I want to look at it from another perspective. Okay. And before I share my perspective with viewers, mm. let me see. Uh, to correct my friend, Bishop Akalame, that when President Obasanjo contested in 1999, he lost his polling unit in Owu. He lost it. Mm. He didn't win it. So it is very possible for candidates to win. And I would have been happier when you use yourself as an example. You said you came third in the election. I would have been happy to hear the total votes cast for you in the whole of Edo State. Because as a governorship candidate, it is not sufficient for you to win your boot uh, uh, alone. Absolutely. Of course, no doubt that you have ideas. You can be a good governor for Edo State. No, no, no doubt about that. But what, the only reason why you couldn't get elected, why you came tall, is because you did not have the statewide structure. Acceptability. Yeah, I didn't vote for you in my polling unit today, went to move, for example. Mm. Because we are not in the same party. That's the point I am making. Okay. And I, I also agree with you. That yes, Nigerians may be fed up and that people don't get to contest election because of their competence, but because of loyalty. Solid point. You don't, you don't dispute that. But let me give you another perspective on why there is a proliferation of presidential candidates. You see, the only viable industry in Nigeria today is politics. It is the only viable industry. So if you cannot get to that industry via the PDP train or the APC train, a lot of people are establishing their own train services to try and get to, to, the, to, to the source of the industry. Some of them, many of them know. Someone like Sowore knows that he cannot win. Not because he's not a good person, he's not a fit and proper person, the president of Nigeria, but he doesn't have the structure, he doesn't have the resources. But he hasn't that, said so. No, no, no. He hasn't said so. Has no, he told you that? No, he won't say so. No, he hasn't I, I, said so. No, he won't say so. So you can't so, say no. he cannot win. No. The election has not taken no, place. No, no, no. Let's, let's, let's give let's him the up. benefit it of the like, doubt. It is like, I, I, I've, interviewed, I've interviewed him here. Yeah, last election. And he told okay, me that. Okay, let me bring it home. Yeah. Last election, somebody from this station, from this establishment, was a governorship candidate, my very good friend. He has interviewed me on programs like this. Yes. Did he win? When he came out, did you know? Did you were you convinced in your mind that he will win and become governor of Edo State? I gave him the benefit no. of that. <laughs> <laughs> not because he cannot be governor, but he structured the finances anywhere in the world. Politics are expensive venture. President Trump, because he's a multi-millionaire billionaire before becoming president, was able to self-finance his uh, his election okay. on election day. While my brother was busy working to win his polling booth. In my polling booth, people were busy sharing for money to work, to, to vote, not to vote for him, but to vote for other yes. political parties. And of course, he does not have the money to give to 192 wars in the state. So the point I am making, the proliferation can be traced first to the economic recession and the fact that politics remains the only viable industry in Nigeria. 
So if you are uh, unable to get to the source of that industry through the mainstream political parties, you form your own political party. Uh, ultimately, an uh, alliances could be created. Yeah, yeah. When alliances are created, monies will exchange hands. And some people will just be able to smile away to their banks. Okay. That is the way I can explain the prohibition. Uh, prohibition Many thanks again for candidates. joining us on the program Politics Today on independent television and radio. We'll take it a, a notch higher uh, on the concluding side of our discussions today on the program. Well, some have said that former President Chief Olusha Gwambasunjo is a major factor on who becomes the president of Nigeria. Uh, some are against that, some avoid. You should respect that kind of situation because we all, we always not agree on the same issue. I mean, it's manifesting right here in the studio. But, gentlemen, let's look at the endorsement uh, by former uh, President Chief Lucia Gwambasunjo on the PDP candidate. So I ask the question now, is OBJ a factor come 2019? Bishop Akalame. Yes. <clears throat> Let me quickly say this, that um, the way elections are going in Nigeria, I said it's here. That was last year. I said, if you want to contest an election, you forget personalities who fail. You get what I'm saying? Because there are personalities that determine the pattern of votes of some persons. I remember last year, when we were supposed to have House of Representative election, by election in Esako, that the youth said, Bishop Akalame have to come to tell us where we are going, the direction. There are personalities that determine the pattern of vote, whether we like it or not, in a certain world, in certain areas. So, if you neglect such personalities, failure is inevitable. President Olusegun Obasanjo, whether we like it or not, is a personality. And, and one of his fans. So, I believe that we have a lot of people who believe in him all over the country. Okay? So, when he says something, because of that love we have for him, because of that faith, the belief we have for him, so when he says something, we, 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 we think that we must go the direction it's going. So, at Duke, yeah. so what I'm trying to tell you is that, whether we like it or not, mm. President Tolu Shogo Basajo is a very big factor in the forthcoming what, presidential election. election in Nigeria. If I think we have got it that, my brother, that is a pass mark already. Okay? That is a pass mark already. Considering other factors. You get what I'm saying now? Yeah. I do not belong to uh, any of the any of the any I do not I'm not supporter, I'm not campaigning for him. But I'm trying to tell you the reality of Grant. That if I've got the, the endorsement of President uh, former President Olusha Go mm -hmm. it's a pass mark already. Considering other factors again. We'll talk about other factors, but let me get uh, back to that here. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, I have tremendous respect for President Olusha Gombasanjo, uh, in spite of his failings as president of this country. He presided over the affairs of Nigeria at a time of great economic boom, oil boom. Unfortunately, there are not so many infrastructure to justify his tenure as president. But I respect him for two reasons. One, the introduction of this thing you are holding now. <laughs> Telephone. Telephone. GSM. Uh, GSM. Okay. I respect him. It has changed our lives, the way we do business, the way we communicate. And then I also respect him for being able to get debt forgiveness for Nigeria as a country. Mm. But having said that, I don't think he has the political clout that my brother Bishop is ascribing to him. Like I said earlier on, even when he contested, he lost his own polling unit. Atiku is a bigger and better politician. And I'm a politician, a grassroots one, a grassroots uh, one for that matter. Atiku is a better politician than Olusha Gwambasanjo. In fact, for Obasanjo to get his second term, and that was the beginning of the bad blood between the two men, he had to kneel down to beg Atiku because Atiku had been able to get all the governors, members of the National Assembly to sign, and he was going to run against him in the second term. And people had to plead with Obasanjo that if you know you want a second term, you have to go and beg at it. And he nailed down. And Atiku had to carry him up. That is the beginning of the bad blood. So Obasanjo does not have this political clout being ascribed to him. Let us go to the issue of uh, uh, endorsement. Yeah. I have read in the, from the newspapers the test 
of what Obasan just said to Atiko of Baka in the presence of uh, the men of God and the other PDP leaders that went with him. Yeah. I want to say with all sense of responsibility, what Obasan just said was not an endorsement, but an indictment. And I am shocked to my marrows that Atiku listened, and you could see from the pictures we have seen, the expression on his face was not a particularly happy expression. Atiku listened to such indictment by Obasanjo, who he has a penchant for not forgiving people. He believes have crossed him, and they, they refuse to say what. Mm. Let us try and do a content and contextual analysis of what he said. Mm. He said, now I'm happy my former vice president Atiku has rediscovered himself. Yeah. That is very pregnant. Rediscovered it. Was he lost before? Lost in what? Then he went further to say that he was not bothered about the sins Adiku committed against him or Basenjo as a person. Mm. But the sins he committed against the party PDP, sins he committed against the country Nigeria, and the sins he committed against his government. What are these sins? Is that an uh, endorsement or an indictment? And he proceeded to add that, well, Yes, since you are discovering yourself, you have asked for forgiveness, but there are still uh, 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 people you have to request forgiveness for, from Nigeria and from even the international community. Mm. For me, that's an in, in the indictment. Against the background, as boss to Atiku, he had written a testimonial for Atiku in gold, and that testimonial cannot be presented by Atiku, whether locally or internationally. Because our passenger plays God. He believes he's a saint. Every other person is corrupt. I don't believe and I don't agree with the tag of Atiku as corrupt. Because Atiku has never been arrested by any of the security agencies in Nigeria. He has never been arraigned, let alone convicted. And until these three steps are taken, I do not believe he's corrupt. But as a politician myself, I know that there's no politician in this country that can cast the first stone. Okay. Because we have all fallen short of the, of the glory of the Lord. <laughs> that, is, that is the truth. So it, it lies still in Obasanjo's mouth to be calling this one corrupt, this one when he himself is the father and grandfather of corruption. No, you, you, you can't say that because he too has not been uh, prosecuted. Well, uh, uh, to, to the extent yeah. that he yeah. has not been, so you can I, say agree. He's, he's yes, I agree. But I he agree. said he has forgiven Atiku. He said so. Yeah. He yes. has, so yeah. What, does, what is the import of that? The, the, the import of his forgiveness, he yes. can only forgive Atiku for the sins Atiku committed against him yes. as a person. Yes. Yes. He cannot forgive Atiku for the sins he claimed Atiku uh, 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 committed against the PDP. He, he, did, he, we, didn't, we delineate, he didn't delineate he this cannot, forgiveness. He, has, he, has no, no, he didn't delineate it. Yes, do, he, delineate he has no locus. Mm. He has no such locus. Okay. We, as we speak, nobody is aware of the party of Batenjo belong to. Yes. In a very melodramatic manner, some years ago, he tore his PDP membership card. Okay. okay, but let us even agree for the purpose of argument that he had returned to the PDP. Does Obasanjo have the locus to forgive Atiku for the sins he allegedly committed against Nigeria as a country? Is Obasanjo uh, personifying Nigeria? No! Obasanjo is only making ex cathedra statements in Paris as if Nigeria belongs to the Ebora of Ogu. Okay. Nigeria doesn't belong to him. Okay. Instead of uh, endorsing the uh, 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 article, he has created uh, article. Okay. The way to endorse is, oh, this is my beloved former vice president. Mm. All the achievements I had in my, uh, during my tenure, we achieved it together. Yeah. I commend him to Nigerians. He will do it. We take off from where we start. He says something like that in the closing part of that speech. He says something like that. But not but, after the escorting. Okay, let me, let me get uh, Bishop Halame uh, <laughs> on board. Mm. Um, the endorsement of Atiku has been a raging issue. If it wasn't an endorsement and uh, it wasn't in any way uh, giving a nod to Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, do you think there would have been any reason for the ruling party to uh, make a statement in that direction? Countering what um, uh, Basin just said or countering the Suppose the endorsement as well. You see, in anything we do, this process, with these steps, we know before now that the former president has never been on the same page with articulated Atiku Abubakar. But now, he said, thank God that you have rediscovered yourself. You see, that word you are saying, rediscover, 
If a man has done something wrong, I will not come back to say, I am sorry. It means you have rediscovered yourself. Yeah, it could be that when he left the party to another party, then he lost himself. Now it could be that when he could not come back to Baba to say, oh, what I've done to you is forgive me, he lost himself. Now that he has returned back to his party, as, as, the, as the candidate of that same party, he has discovered, rediscovered himself. Now he has remembered that Obasanjo is a factor in Nigeria politics, and he went to him. He has also rediscovered himself. Now he now said, "As for me, I forgive you, but you can go back to every other person that you feel you have offended." Okay? Well, let me tell you something. In as far as I'm concerned, that is adjustment. That is what adjustment. Now you have taken that first step. The next stage now, he will not come out to say, "Oh, this is my son." So if I say, "Please go." Please go. And see no more. Uh, no, if, no, if I say, please go, I'm not, I'm not interested. Yeah, okay. I'm not interested. Okay. You can't say, yeah. I'm not interested. Because I know he did it to some persons that came to him for the other candidate, if you are aware, two weeks ago. He left them his own, his, he left them his house. He went somewhere. He came back, he said, you can see here. That was an embarrassment. But he didn't do it to this one. He said, I'm forgiving you. But let me say it, that this election, it could be a referendum. It was President Muhammad Buhari. He also going to be a referendum on Alahaji Abubakar Atiku. Those that feel that Atiku is not a sinner, he has done well when he was with former President Olusha Gobasajo. We vote yes for him. Those that feel that he sinned when he was there, we vote no for him. Then those who feel that the incumbent president has not done well for this country, we vote, we vote no for him. Those who have feel that they have done, he has done well as a city president of this country, we vote yes. So, for both candidates, as I have said, that they are the major part, political party for this election, yeah. this election, 2019, is going to be a referendum. Okay, let me pursue this. Let me pursue this. Shortly, our studio line will be over. Oh, but, but let me just yeah. take you back a little bit because you said that you, you are not uh, with those. In other words, you do not toe the same line with those who say uh, the former vice president is corrupt because uh, a court of competent jurisdiction, as you say in law, yeah, yeah. has not yet tried him or yeah. convicted him. Yes. Is it that an endorsement, contrary to some of the views canvassed by you know, some key leaders in your political party? No, it's not, it's not an endorsement. What it simply means is that we should not campaign, we should not make a campaign issue out of whether um, article is corrupt or not. Okay. Should, that should not be the issue. Okay. The issue is let us look at his antecedents, let us look at his policies, let us see if he will be a better president than our incumbent president. Okay. Not, not whether or not he's corrupt, because those making the allegations themselves, if, if you point one finger at me, four fingers will be pointing to yourself. That is the truth. You know? So for me, that should not be our campaign issue. Okay. Let us instead, let us continue to accentuate the strong aspect of President Buhari, the things that he has done, where he has failed, we should acknowledge it. And then hope and advice that in the second coming, he should also now become stronger in the areas where he has not, uh, where he has not uh, be, 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 be performed at the, at, at the optimum. Okay. So instead of saying that is corrupt, 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 when there is no strength of evidence, like some people will go to further to say he cannot visit America. How does visiting America uh, relate with becoming president of Nigeria? If eventually he's elected, and I pray he's not elected because I want my party to win, <laughs> He will definitely visit America. So that he's not, uh, he's been declared president of Greater in America, he's uh, corrupt, those are not the issues. Because in law, if he had been con uh, convicted for corruption, he will even lack the legal uh, locus to contest for the office. He will not even emerge uh, as a candidate of the PDP. That he emerged as a candidate of the PDP means that he doesn't have any corruption conviction hanging on his neck. Okay. And if there is none on his neck, we should not uh, go uh, to town with the mantra that is corrupt. Because, like I said, nobody, public officers, whether elected or appointed, or even the public servants, nobody can cast the first stone in this country. Okay, uh, Mr. Mahalame, uh, you, you talked about other factors that yes. may have influenced um, um, former President Chief Ulysses Gwobasujo's stand currently uh, on... Uh, Vice President Atiku Abubakar, as yes. against yes. what it used to be. Yes. What are those factors? You know, I've, I, I, when I told you that, I, well, I, I have to still say this, that former President Olusegun Obasanjo has a very big factor. 
that when he used words that people like us, who are his own apostles, we listen and we make use of those words because we believe in him. See, he told us last week, he said Jesus Christ was an economist. Jesus Christ was an economist. That was why things were moving for him when he was on this earth. So if you want to be a leader in this country, what we need is good manager of our resources because we have them. Duke, I put it to you that if your wife is not a good manager, if you give your wife 10,000 euros within three, three days or one day, two days, we we'll come back to you to say, please, I need more 20,000 euros that the one you gave me has finished. So we need a leader who can manage the little resources we have in the country to bring out the best in us. And he said it in his book. All them I watch that the president, Orusha, uh, sorry, President Buhari is not an economic leader. That he does not have what it takes to transform the economy. That's his personal opinion. That, uh, expressing a that's why, that, yeah, No, yeah. We, are, we, are, we are discussing him as a factor. I, I know, I know. You are telling me now what are those factors that trigger his endorsement on Atiku Abubakar? You yeah. know what I'm discussing? Yeah. No, I'm not telling you one. That you now see Atiku as a better candidate who is more economically inclined. Don't forget that that man is a successful businessman. When a man has managed his own business and succeed, there's that test that when they give the credit to manage, you can equally bring out uh, some positive what sign. You have seen that. And do not forget again, two of them, the Atiku himself and the President Muhammad Bali, they are from the north. The two of them are Funanis. And I tell you, that is where the block of what votes come from. That nobody gives the, the Buhari that advantage over other candidates. That block vote will not come this time around because two of them are from the same uh, uh, region. At the same time, the itself is a Fulani and the, the article itself is what a Fulani. Now, two, he has looked BBG again that. He has also looked BBG and discovered that if you look, if you go to the North Central, yeah. the North Central now, it seems to be only one governor that is preaching the gospel of Muhammad Buhari. And that governor, I have visited the state, I swear that. He does not even have good relationship, good rapport with his people. Okay? Now you come again. He has promised the evil that he's going to do just four years. That when he when he's done, he will add over to them. I do not forget, his wife is an evil woman. And now again, he has taken a running mate from that region again. Okay, that's another factor. Both the PDP and the APC manifesto, the issue of restructuring is not captured in both uh, manifesto. But Atiku has made it as a personal mantra which the Yoruba people want to hear. You see all those kind of things. So, the who is who in the Yoruba land? They have come out to say, oh, since what we have been yelling for, a man has come to say, whether it's in the, my, the party manifesto or not, this is going to be my third priority to ensure that this country what, is restructured. Okay. So, and as a result of that, yeah. they are throwing their cap. If you go to Hadid Desi Go now, you look at it. They've already congratulated this young man. Okay, let me let me pursue the yeah. uh, uh, Bishop Bahalame. Thank you. I, I don't know if there are some of the thoughts that he expressed that you feel differently about, particularly the analysis on the uh, the um, block votes, the no, regional well, votes, and stuff well, like those that. Those are they yes, are they, yes. are they are subjective, very subjective opinion. Okay, so um, they won't count in your no, opinion. No, like for example, he yes. says Atiku is married to an Igbo wife. Atiku's first wife is Yoruba. Okay. Atiku has four wives, okay. including an American, Jennifer. So he's a real Wasobia guy. He's a Wasobia man. <laughs> Wasobia, you know. So all those will not uh, count. For me, that is taking a uh, Peter Obi, if it is confirmed, that yes. Peter Obi is vice president, that's another great decision. Uh, uh, yeah, a good decision okay. on his part. Okay. But electorally, it's not wise. Okay. Because the region where Peter Obi comes from is already PDP. With the only exception of Peter Obi state that is Abga. And then Imo, that is APC. All the other Igbo states, they are PDP. So with or without a vice presidential candidate coming from there, they are likely to vote. So he should like have looked a, elsewhere. He should have gone to the Southwest. Mm -hmm. Some people were suggesting Adeshino, who was the best minister under uh, uh, Jonathan, yeah. the minister for Greek, yeah. or such other persons. Yeah. So I believe even suggested uh, from us in the South, South Dakota, Joy Allah. Yeah. So that decision for me is not politically strategic. It's not politically strategic. Okay. Because you, you've got to tell people that will naturally vote for you. So now you should not expect votes from the Yoruba, from the Southwest, because then we also want to vote for their vice president, that is a uh, Yoruba Mausi Banjo. Then he mentioned the issue of he will serve only one term. Even President Buhari promised that he will serve one term. At the end of the one term, has that promise been kept? So the Igbos will be politically naive to buy into that uh, promise, Ukla and Sinka, mm -hmm. that he will serve one term. 
Because at the end of four years, the same story, if he wins, he will tell you, I've not been able to do my program, the restructuring is on cause, I need to be given more opportunity to take it. So that's not it. I believe, and I respect Atiku as a politician, and I will, uh, we are firm here, one of the reasons why I respect him. It is that in every state of the country today, even while he's not been president, you have core Atiku loyalists. If Atiku comes to Edo today, he can mention 20, 30, 40 Edo people that he knows that he has their phone numbers that he can call. On both sides of the divide. On both sides of the divide. It has nothing to do with, uh, for example, I'm personally close to him. I am. <laughs> and I make no uh, secret of it. <laughs> I make no secret of it. Yeah. So, unlike some other politicians who may come to Edo State, apart from the governor and deputy governor, they may know no other person. So, that's why I said, in terms of political uh, ranking, Atiku is higher than Obasanjo. Atiku is higher than Oba. Atiku won his ward, won his local government, won his boot, won his state when he ran as vice president to Obasanjo. But Obasanjo lost his own boot. Okay. So he's a bigger politician. Okay, let's and see. doesn't need endorsement from, okay. uh, from Obasanjo because whatever verbal endorsement Obasanjo gives now, which I call indictment, he cannot obliterate what he has put uh, in his book, uh, under in my his watch. Book, in his book under All my right, watch. let me let me just for yeah. the for the benefit of our viewers and listeners, run through uh, the thirty-one presidential candidates. Yes, you need to know that in case you go for an interview <laughs> and, uh, and all of that stuff. Yes, the loan, the phone uh, is almost busting because people want to call. But the the number is oh five two two nine zero five seven three. Well, you already know that uh, PMB is the president and is also the APC candidate, uh, PDP, Alhaji Atiku Abubaka, uh, SDP, Social Democratic Party, Mr. Donald Duke, uh, Mr. Benga, Olaikbo Hashim, Alliance for New Nigeria, ANN. Uh, because our time is really up, I appreciate you for your contributions to the discussions on politics today. Now, gentlemen, before we call it a wrap, uh, the drum playing out from uh, Zafara State doesn't look so good, particularly for the ruling party. Was that avoidable, uh, Bishop Bakala? You see, <clears throat> this question you just asked me, I, I asked myself rhetorically this question this very morning, that why should a house, a family, that's supposed to do things peacefully, begin to fight themselves? begin to work against themselves. So if such family is not dealing with another family, what will not play out? That was the question I asked myself rhetorically. APC as a party in their last Congress, last primary election, in as far as my own as, as, a, as a political analyst, yeah. in my own assessment, my own I'm not really impressed. Okay, let me let me push it because our time is up. <laughs> but like that, but this is normal with uh, politics and politicking and election area and what have you. It is, it is very normal, and even more so with the ruling party. Um, APC is in control of Zamfara, local government, uh, state, and then federal level. Of course, the contestations will be higher there. Because even in the days of PDP, when PDP was in control, it was the same scenario. People believe that once they get the ticket of the party, they have, uh, they, have, uh, they have won the election to the offices. And because of that, they become desperate, they are prepared to do anything. So whatever play they are doing in the primary, completely... Um, uh, understandable within the context of Nigerian politics and Nigerian politicians. So for us, no big deal. And it has been, it has been sorted out. Okay. Well, that's uh, just before we draw the curtains now, I, I, I did promise to let you know who the 31 political uh, presidential candidates are from uh, uh, African Action Congress, AAC. We have Omoyale Shawari, Mrs. O.B. is a question. She's a former minister. She's a former minister. Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACPN, Dr. Bedaya Melafia, African Democratic Congress, ADC, Professor Kingsley Mogalu, Young Progressive Party, YPP, Pastor Chris Okoti, Fresh Democratic Party, FDP, Major Hamza Al Mustafa, retired, <laughs> People's Party of Nigeria, PPN, Honorable Habib Mohammed Gajo, Young Democratic Party, YDP, Dr. Ulishago Mimiko, Zenith Labour Party, ZLP, Major General Jan Gober, uh, Mo, All Progressive Grand Alliance, Abga, Ali Shoyode, Yes Party, Dr. Davison Isibo Ahimie, Ahimie,
Grassroots Dem Development Party of Nigeria, the GDPN, E.K. Keke, New Nigerian People's Party, NNPP, Apostle Sunday Chuku uh, Eguzologu, uh, Justice Must Prevail Party, JMPP, Mrs. Eunice Atwejide, National Interest Party, NIP, Hamisu uh, Santuraki, Mega Party of Nigeria, Honorable Dozier Madu, Independent Democrat Party, Professor Peter Wangu, we, the people of Nigerian Party, Mr. Ahmed B. Buhari, Sustainable National Party, Mr. Tokbe Faswa, Abundant Nigerian Renewal Party, Mr. Ade Fagmero Bryan, uh, Koa Party, Moses Shipi, All Blending Party, Alhaji Yahaya Undu, African Renaissance Party, and then Mr. Chuk Sunwachuku, All Grassroots Alliance, and then Pastor Habu Aminchi, People's Democratic Movement, PDM, Yabaji Yusuf Sani, Action Democratic Party, ADP, Mr. Babatunde Ademola, Nigerian Community Movement Party, and the last but not the least, Mr. Martin Onovo, Conference of Nigerian Political Parties, CNPP. Now, you know the 31 presidential candidates in the 2019 general elections. I'm not it, sure. It, it took sure. your reading it for me to know that there's an Edo man there, Arimi. Yes. Yeah, you read one, Arimi. No, 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 let's, let's not go there. Let's not go there. He's popular within, within his own right. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on the program. Mr. Mahalame, Vice President thank you for coming You're on welcome. the show. That's it on the program today. Be sure to join us next week, Saturday. Have a great weekend and bye for now.